What's up guys? We are back with another Star Wars review and this is an SH Figure Arts review and it's been a little while since I've done one of these. I actually never got around to reviewing Count Dooku. Honestly, I never even opened him. I've just not ever gotten to him. But we're getting to this one because I've really been looking forward to this little guy. So we are of course going to take a look at the latest figure from Bandai Tamashii Nations. We've got the Episode 3 version of Yoda, and this guy was a web exclusive, so of course he has the web exclusive style packaging. This guy is also a little different because, well, his box is pretty big despite him being really small because of all the stuff he comes in, but it's also a landscape style box. It's not a portrait box, so you've got a longer than tall type of box. So you've got the figure on the front here, your standard black packaging, and then you've got that kind of dithered uh, image on the back, which I frankly don't really like, but it's a web exclusive, so they don't give you the, the window boxes. And then you've got the lightsaber motif down the side, and then the back of the package has got a tremendous spread of product shots for our little green friend here. So yeah, let's do it. Let's pull them out. Take a look. And here he is, our SH Figure Arts Yoda out of the package. Something that I've really been looking forward to, just to be able to get a Yoda in this style. And uh, yeah, I think there's a lot to be happy about with this figure. Not just because we get a Yoda, but because this particular version of Yoda kind of allows for a lot of different stuff. He's not the Dagobah Yoda, he's obviously a prequel Yoda. So you've got a lot of options in terms of styles for this figure, which I like when it comes to figure arts. So let's jump in, see how this guy can move around. He is... Pretty similar while still being slightly different from most. He is, of course, just very, very small. So that changes things up a bit. So you've got a head that can look down a little bit, and then he can look up a little, but it starts to kind of rub on the cloak if you move him too far back. Little bobble side to side and then rotation. The arms do go out at the shoulder and then they rotate around as well. There is a butterfly joint in there to help get him kind of crossed his chest when it comes to his arms. There's a rotating uh, single jointed elbow here, so you can rotate at the bottom of the elbow and then hinge. Pretty good movement, honestly. It's 90-ish degrees, despite the fact that he has these massive uh, cuffs here. And then it's just a ball peg for the wrist. There's So you've got rotation, and basically you've got hand-ripping action there. They do come out really easily, or at least they have been for me, because they don't have a great deal of, of range of motion there, so just watch out. You've got your waist twist here. This guy is, of course, a little limited when it comes to this motion because of the cloak. It's a rubbery piece. But it does move, so you can bend him forward and backward, side to side, and then you can rotate there. It just will kind of get in the way, stop you from moving him. Legs kick forward. They do, of course, kick back, but again, the robe is in the way. And they go out decently enough. You can rotate up there at the thigh. You've got a knee joint there, which gets you 90-ish degrees. And then you can rotate down there as well. And then you've also got your ball pegs down here at the feet for some hinge and then rocker and then rotation. These are a little bit more robust than the wrist. I think they're a little bit bigger, which helps with that. But he does move pretty well for being such a small figure. Small cannot be stated too many times on this one. And we'll do a comparison to show you exactly what we're talking about. But he does move pretty well. He just has some limitations because of the size of his body. It kind of is what it is. Now articulation aside, this guy does look really fantastic. I am quite happy with the end result in terms of sculpt, size, face, paint, the whole deal. I think he looks really, really good. In the same way that the recent Archive Yoda from Black Series looks really, really good for that line and for that version of Yoda, I think this version of Yoda looks really good as a figure arts in this particular era of the character. I think they did a really good job of translating this particular version of Yoda into figure form. I'm just really happy with the way he turned out. For the most part, this figure is mostly just molded plastic when you're talking about, say, the, the robes and the, the sleeves and then the under body suit here. So you've got his kind of darker brown body suit with the pants. There is a little bit of texture detail on here, so it's, it's not like it's devoid of any detail. You can kind of see a bit of a weave in that almost, so there, there you can feel it as well. You can kind of feel that texture in there to, to to break up the sculpt and when the light hits it just right you can kind of see that it's not just a flat piece of plastic. You do have the rubbery uh, robe here which has the hood on the back side right there and it's just a rubbery piece. We got alternate ones that you can use as well but it, it does its job pretty well. It again also has more of that texture detail so it's not just a flat piece of plastic but I do think he looks really good. I think the green is a nice skin tone. You've got the fingernails and the toenails are painted. A little bit of a wrinkle going on to the skin uh, on the hands and the feet and it, I mean it just looks looks like a younger Yoda, and that's really what I wanted, and I think that's what we got. There's, again, not a great deal of paint on the body, but 
that's not too abnormal for figure arts. And for this particular figure, I'm not so sure that's really a big deal either. Where we get most of the paint, and a lot of, honestly, most of the sculpt on this guy is from the neck up in what is ultimately a really fantastic head sculpt. And truly, this is my favorite part of the base figure. I think that this is really the selling point for the entire figure is the face and head sculpts and the photo reel type of digital face printing that they've got going on. It just looks like Yoda from the prequel era. And I'm, I'm a big fan of everything they did here. Sizing, color, the hair sculpt, the little bit of wash in the hair. And then there's a you know obviously a little bit of wash in the face itself to kind of bring out all of the wrinkles, make him look old, which you know, 800 years old, of course he's gonna look old, but the, the printing is clean and crisp, and it looks like Yoda, and that's really, that's really what I want here. So, you can't go wrong when they deliver exactly what you want. In the area that honestly matters most, the face is really what sells this guy. Now, of course I mentioned that this guy is small, so here's an idea of how small he is. Here he is next to the Black Series Yoda, and you can see that this guy is definitely bigger. You'll see pictures of Yoda with other figure arts later on in the review, but as far as what really sells just how tiny this guy is, you can look at him next to, you know, another very small figure, although he's definitely a little bit oversized in some capacities. So you've got that, and then just as another way to kind of bring it in, here he is next to a three and three quarter inch figure, Obviously not a Star Wars, but Star Wars inspired. So here he is next to a Phantom Star Killer, and you can see that he is, I mean, he's absolutely dwarfed by this guy. So Yoda is incredibly small, especially for this line. Now this is a figure arts release, so of course we have a pretty good spread of accessories with this guy. I'm really, really happy with just about everything we got. It's, it's kind of like the, the full deal when it comes to a prequel era Yoda. So of course you can already see that I have switched him up a bit. So you've got a replacement cloak or the outer cloak, the, the actual hooded robe portion, and it's kind of a windswept him, so kind of where you got him in battle or just jumping around or doing goofy prequel Yoda type stuff. You just, the easiest way to do it is to pop the arms off and then just throw it on. They have pegs in the back to help them kind of stay in place as well. So you've got that. And you can also see that I have swapped out some hands here. So you've got in the package to begin with, you've kind of got the force push kind of hands. So you've got a set of those, but then you've also got a set of gripping hands here. And then you've also got a set of hands that are actually really meant to kind of hold on to the cane that he has, which, well, I haven't talked about it yet. And the box shows him being able to like cr clasp his hands together. I cannot get him to do that at all, but you can get him pretty close. Maybe you can do it. I just haven't been able to. So you've got that. This one is even keyed a little bit to lock into a notch that's on the top. So he's got his little curled wooden cane here and it's got this little notch on the top and it'll fit into that hand to help it kind of stay in place really well, which frankly is a really good idea and it works quite well. He's also got some extra head sculpts. So you've got the the kind of thing that they've been doing a lot lately with figure arts. And I don't know if we've been seeing it with Star Wars or not. Maybe I just haven't paid attention. But you've got one of the ones where he's kind of looking off to the left. So it's the same head sculpt that you have to begin with. It just has a different direction for the eyes, which honestly kind of works because Yoda is in this exact kind of pose in the prequels when he's fighting. So it works while at the same time being kind of a lazy change. But then you've got this guy here, which is Yoda with kind of a frown. He's kind of grunting, straining, and he's got closed eyes. So you've got this one here. And this one is, ideally, this seems to be meant for him when he's actually in battle, like when he's lifting the debris in the battle with Count Dooku or when he's uh, fighting with Sidious or you know Palpatine in Revenge of the Sith. It's that kind of head where he's actually in battle. So I think that's a really, really good one. It works really well. The expression, paint, the whole deal is really nicely done. And then you've got his lightsaber, which works really well to hold him together in some ways when you've got him kind of doing a, a two-handed pose, which you can do. You can achieve a two-handed pose with the lightsaber, uh, and it works really well. So you've got some translucent plastic for the blade, of course, and then you've got the little tiny hilt with the silver and black details. But of course, for this particular release, that is not it. No, the big thing in this particular release is, of course, his Jedi Council chair, which makes for one great bonus item, and this might be exactly how I display this guy. So of course that means there's extra stuff included just to get him to be able to sit in this thing, because there's no way that that little figure can articulate correctly to actually sit in this. But as far as the chair itself, I mean, it's really nicely done. It very much looks like it popped right out of the movie. You've got that kind of maroony brown seat and then the kind of gunmetal color 
for the base. Now there is a hole on the bottom right there and you can pop the actual seat out because this is how you get Yoda to actually fit inside. He comes with another robe. So in addition to the standard robe, and then the robe that is kind of windswept, you've got a seated one. And basically what you do is pop the head off, pop the arms off, is what I find to be the easiest. And then this robe actually fits around him, and it has the illusion of him actually sitting down. But you can see his legs are sticking out there, and then they just fit down into the cavity. But, you know, people who don't know are none the wiser. And I think the illusion is sold really, really well. He looks like he's just a part of this chair. So I'm really sold with the idea behind this one. My only real gripe when it comes to really the whole package on this one is that because of how he's articulated and this robe, it is kind of difficult to get him to be doing any kind of normal seated position with his hands. I feel like he's, I feel like he doesn't know what to do with his hands when he's in this thing. So you might have to play around with that or at least I'm going to have to. But otherwise, I think he looks pretty stellar and I love the idea of even getting this and I think it's executed pretty well. So yeah, this is a good one. There's really not a whole lot to say that's negative about this one outside of the fact that, you know, like I mentioned, I think he doesn't really know what he's doing with his hands when he's in that chair, but the chair looks good no matter what. And he comes with a great array of accessories. He comes with, really, he comes with a lot of stuff, more than I was expecting initially when we first found out he was coming. I think they kind of crammed this one full of a lot of the right kind of stuff, hands, extra cloaks, Really nice extra head sculpts, the cane, the way the extra hands are implemented with the various uh, methods of holding items. And I just think he looks good. He very much looks like a really, really tiny Yoda, and he looks fantastic next to the other SH Figure Arts Jedi. So you can't really go wrong with this one. If you were waiting for a Yoda, now is definitely the time to strike. So that's going to do it for this look at the Bandai Tamashii Nation's SH Figure Arts prequel Jedi Master Yoda. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share, and until next time.